I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Thursday, January the 14th, brought to you in part by Norfenicol by Norbrook, a broad spectrum antibiotic for bovine respiratory disease complex. It's easy to use, not as thick, a lot easier to get into your syringe and a lot easier to inject. Uh, it comes with a plastic hanger bottle that uh, won't break on you and, and you can hang there at the chute that's real handy. It's got a shorter sub Q withdrawal period. For more information, visit norbrook.com. Hard to figure, uh, a lot of stuff hard to figure these days. Uh, but on Wednesday, particularly, uh, it was hard to figure after we had our grain skyrocket uh, on Tuesday. We come back in Wednesday and your feeder cattle board actually closed up a little bit. And uh, most of your cash feeder sales, uh, albeit lower, we're selling cattle fairly briskly at prices that will not pencil at all. And uh, you know, I was talking to some guys uh, on uh, Wednesday in the morning and, and uh, they were saying, uh, you know, these cattle didn't pencil out at $4 a bushel, let alone five and a quarter. Uh, but uh, guys are still going after the cattle and uh, we're glad of it. You know, one reason they're going after them because they're in a competitive market uh, they get all caught up in the sale barns and, and uh, that's the way you're supposed to sell cattle and that's the way they sell the best and end up a lot of times giving more than they intended or more than they wanted to but they want to stay in the business so they're, so they're buying cattle but your markets were sure lower around I mean there's no doubt that they were going to be uh, but maybe not as bad as what we figured and we still saw some top prices but talking about those cattle not uh, not uh, penciling out at all uh, just run a quick uh, conservative pencil to some how about some 800 pounders at 135 well your real time index is sitting just under 135 but if you're going to buy a load of them or a couple of big jags to make a load you'd uh, to get them any cheaper than 135 most parts of the country you'd have to put little deals together or something and then you're going to have a little bit more health problem which is going to kick them back up probably higher than that in the long run but if you uh, if you buy 800 pounder there at 135 and then you figure you're going to put uh, 600 pounds on him sure making way 1400 pounds at, at a dollar a pound cost a gain guys and by the time you get them there uh, you get them processed you get them going and then uh, this high high input cost of feed it's sure going to cost you a dollar and and you guys that are doing it yourself you you've got to figure in opportunity costs on that because uh, you got to figure out what your corn's worth and, and, and your time and everything else. But you figure 600 pounds at, at a dollar cost a gain. Okay, well, you've, you've got $1,080 in that steer to start out with. Uh, you put another $600 with him with your dollar cost a gain. Now you've got $1,680 ahead in that steer weighing 1,400 pounds. To make him wash, you needed buck 20. Now you look out to your June fat cattle market uh, and it's setting around 115. So congratulations, you've locked in a $70 a head loss. That's just rough uh, estimates and figures, but fairly conservative, guys. So, uh, you know, I don't know how many loads of those you could stand, but I wouldn't want to do it very long. Uh, before I'd get kind of sick of it but you know it's just hard to figure those cattle I mean uh, God bless them they're out there still beating their head against the wall trying to do things uh, but that and, it, and they're having to keep these pins full which we've uh, we shook a little bit of pin space loose during the holidays and then we about got that filled back up there's not a lot of places to put cattle but it's impressive that cattle are still bringing what they are Another thing that's hard to figure is this impeachment deal. We've got a president that, uh, uh, whether you want to call it one way or the other, but roughly half the country voted for. And, uh, and, and you're wanting to impeach him with a week to go before he leaves office and he's already conceded saying he's going to leave. How petty is that? Uh, you're wanting to prove some kind of a point, which uh, if history goes back and looks, it's going to look at the Congress uh, during the four years of, of Trump of being very petty of just trying to, to accuse him and, uh, and, and pressure him into doing getting out of office from the entire time that he was in there and you know it, it's and they're, they're wanting people to unite well you've completely pissed off half the country how is that well, with uniting as bad as they hate him there's a lot of people that still love Trump that much 
I would put myself in, in that same group. Uh, I know that was bad judgment for him to make that speech, knowing that there was likely some crazy right-wing nuts in that crowd because the crowd was so huge. Of course, you never saw any pictures of how huge that crowd was. Uh, you, you had to go to people that was actually there. They had a huge crowd in there. Well, and they never showed any of them because they didn't want to show the kind of support that Trump was still getting. They just showed the, the you know, the couple of hundred nuts that went into the, the Capitol there. And it was pitiful what they did there. Uh, you know, it should not be encouraged or anything like that. But you just look at, at the way they wooled him around. And, and really, you know, they, they, and they have no interest in looking at the, the needs, the wants or desires of rural America. So you look at your at your voting map, uh, the the red and blue map there, and you look, and the country's totally red, other than your cities. So uh, for the most part, and uh, you look at it by county, it's sure it's a red map. If you showed it to to any uh, person with uh, disabilities, you'd say, "What color is this map?" They would all say red. So rural America, all your flyover states, all your all your places where they grow food. Uh, I mean, grassroots, uh, the, the heart and soul of this country is in rural America. It's all red, and not just red, I mean bright red. But there's just so many people uh, in those inner cities, in the, in the, the, the urban areas and the suburban areas around them uh, that are sold out to this deal. So, so you're really going to pit urban against rural? You know, is that a smart thing when the rural people are the ones that uh, own all the ground and, and um, make all the food? I don't think so, but uh, you know this this whole deal is scary, and and they're not taking into consideration the the views of people in rural America. I, I don't see them taking that into consideration as we're going forward this new administration. If I had a small amount of deeded acres and a lot of uh, BLM, some kind of a, a government lease on that, it'd be hard to sleep at night, guys. Because, uh, you know, it, it, they'll undo anything. It'll just be like uh, uh, when uh, we ran the Indians off. They just take that ground away from you and you won't have a, uh, um, you know, a leg to stand on. We've seen what they would do in the last administration to try to push people off uh, ground that was theirs that they wanted back. But uh, it's a scary deal. Let's talk about the board on Wednesday. February live cattle futures down 22 cents. Not unexpected at 112.22. Uh, April down 17, 117.47. You're going out from there, and your out front futures were uh, from steady to all the way to up a dollar two on your farthest out traded month, which is June of 2022. January feeder cattle up 35 cents at 133.57. They're up. That's yeah, unbelievable that they're up. I mean, it's, it's nice that they're up. But uh, it, it's likely somebody pushing those contracts that really doesn't totally understand how this deal works. March feeder cattle contracts also up 35 cents at 134.32. Going out from there, they were all up 50 cents to 90 cents, which is great, but it does not figure. Uh, look at your grain futures. Corn for March still up. Uh, it was up a lot bigger overnight, but at the close of the day on Wednesday, it was up seven and a quarter cent at 524 and a half. You know, we were sitting back there, you know, wondering if we'd ever see five dollar corn again. Now we've got corn at five and a quarter a bushel. Let's talk about January beans. They were actually down a little bit, so they thought maybe they overdid them some. So they were down 11 cents, uh, sitting at 1411 on the Wednesday close. Fat cattle trade was established on Wednesday. Thank goodness we had the Texas cash pool uh, for the Southern Plains on Tuesday, which allowed us to kind of hold a pretty decent market. So only a buck lower uh, cash, uh, which is established now. But on your dressed uh, market, it should be $3 lower. Look at some of your prices around. Iowa had uh, almost 5,000 head confirmed on Wednesday from 106 to 109. Well, they're sitting a long ways back of your of your real market there. 173 dress, so that's that's the full dress market there. That's uh, three bucks lower there in Iowa and Nebraska. Nebraska 4,700 head confirmed on Wednesday. 109 is a price, and so 109 is going to be your live price in the, in the Northern Plains in the Midwest. 
Uh, dress prices 172 to a lot of 173 in Nebraska. Kansas, uh, 11,700 had confirmed on Wednesday. There's going to be a lot more than that by the time they total them up. But some 109 to 111, mostly 110 and a lot of 111. And uh, 172 dressed in parts of uh, northern Kansas there. Texas had 4,200 head confirmed, 108 to 111. But if you look at that, you know, guys know I, I brag about uh, consolidated beef producers a lot. Uh, they're headquartered here in Canyon, got friends that work in there. Well, I think they're doing a good job because they t they're back to tweeting out their sales again, which they, they didn't do that during a lot of the COVID, but they're back to tweeting all their sales. Of course, they tweeted out the results of the, the Texas cash pool, which is 11, which was 111, which uh, is the only reason that we were able to keep 111 as a market, uh, you know, in the bulk of the trade was because of those 700 head that people threw in and sold there. And you guys can do that for less than two bucks a head and why you don't do it, I'll never understand it. I mean, just bullheadedness, I guess. But, uh, but they sold a lot of cattle. The bulk of their cattle that they sold on their show list, not the Texas cash pool where they ask people to put in a pen or so uh, from each of their yards so that they can uh, do a sealed bid deal to get the market going. But on their, their regular bulk of sales, which they take people's show lists and market, and market those cattle for them, uh, you gotta just sign up to be a Consolidated Beef Producers member and you can get in on that. They sold the bulk of those cattle at 111. The cattle that they sold less than that, they marked those cattle as mixed type cattle, which is going to be lower type quality cattle, uh, pins that had steers and heifers thrown in there, which is your hodgepodge deals, and then also Mexican steers at 110. So they didn't, they didn't have any cattle quoted less than 110. So what are these cattle that are 108 and 19? Uh, you know, I, I, how much worse do you get than hodgepodge mixed cattle and Mexican steers, you know? So I don't know why more people don't consign there. If you enjoy beating your head against the wall every week, uh, go ahead and keep doing it. If not, let them market their cattle for you. Get a little bit of leverage back in this deal. Box beef cutout values higher again, so things are swinging back in your Packers' favor. Of course, they never got in the red, but uh, you know their their uh, their margins got you know less than a couple hundred bucks ahead there a couple weeks, and that that started making them nervous. Uh, you guys would love to live that way, wouldn't you? Box beef cutout values Wednesday afternoon two eleven even on choice. That's up a dollar eighty six. Selects one ninety nine oh six up ninety seven cents. Your slaughter is not as aggressive as we would like to see it. And now we're hearing that uh, there's going to be some maintenance in some Kansas plants the next few weeks. So likely we're going to see subpar slaughter, uh, you know, uh, between now and then getting into February. That doesn't uh, make us feel very good either. How they're filling all these contracts that they wrote uh, late last year, uh, I don't know, understand how they're doing it. I guess uh, from, from uh, slow movement of boxes there during the holidays and they had some extra product. But slaughter, 349,000 through Thursday. That is 2,000 more than last week, but 21,000 less than the same week a year ago. Uh, let's talk about uh, your feeder cattle market. Uh, your real-time index on DB auction on uh, Wednesday afternoon sitting at 134.85. That was down 93 cents. Uh, talk about your big sales. Uh, I'm doing this report uh, not in the middle of the night like I usually do it because I had some things I wanted to do. So doing it uh, Wednesday afternoon. Didn't have the full trend on some of those sales, but uh, from some guys that were sitting in the seats there and, uh, and quote markets showed that uh, OKC West, uh, 6,000 head there at El Reno. Uh, the big feeder steers, five to 10 bucks lower. Doesn't surprise you. Uh, most weights of calves selling two to five dollars lower. Did see a, a, an individual quote there and got from John Cooper, the auctioneer there, uh, that looked awful impressive to me. 65 head of steers in El Reno weighed 805 at 141.50. You remember that $70 a head loss that we locked in on those 800 pound steers at 135. How about uh, some other quotes that we saw around on Wednesday? Sterling, Colorado, Sterling Livestock Commission, about the most impressive big feed and steers that I saw. 89 head, 812 pounders at 139.75. Pretty salty. 
How about uh, Torrington, Wyoming? Uh, Torrington Livestock Markets, 102 head, 607 pound steers bring 162 on some big feeding calves. Uh, that's pretty good there. Bassett had another sale on Wednesday. They had that big special last week. Uh, just looking at the automated market report, looked like steers were, were four to seven dollars lower, but heifers, the, the, the weighted average quotes on them, were fully steady with help, no doubt, from some replacement quality type heifers there, which, uh, you know, give, gives some two way bidding there, which kind of holds them together a little bit more. But the best quote that I saw anywhere on Wednesday come out of Bassett, of course, and your Zach Tran top quote for the day, 177 steer calves weighed 641 at 163.50. And that's your feeder flash for Thursday.